Okay, all right, all right. If I could just have your attention for a few moments, we want to talk about our theme for this year. But I want to start with a question. If you had 24 hours and unlimited resources, you could do anything, go anywhere, what would you do? Raise your hand wherever you're at, and I'll call on you. What would you do? Boom. What would you do? 24 hours, unlimited resources. Go to space. Anyone over here? Yes. Go to Europe. All right, last one, last one. Yes. I'm surprised no one chose win youth group Olympics. That would have been like the most epic thing ever. Let me tell you, if I had 24 hours and unlimited resources, of course, I had more time to think about it than you, but I thought immediately of the beach. I love the beach. I love warm, and I love people. So I just have like a big beach party. You're all invited. Everyone's invited. Everyone gets to come. My whole family, my closest friends, that includes you. Uh, I just have a big beach party because I love people. I love the ocean. I love the sound of the ocean and waves crashing on the beach. But whatever you chose, even if it was in your head, you didn't say it out loud, probably tells you a little bit about yourself. Whatever you chose would demonstrate what you find most valuable. It maybe even points to something deeper inside of you, a deeper desire that God has even placed inside of you because God has uniquely shaped each one of us. You might say that whatever you chose for those 24 hours would be what you define as the good life. Everywhere we go, everything we look at often is screaming at us and telling us to purchase this thing. Maybe you're watching some sports on TV and there's a commercial that comes up. Maybe you're scrolling on your phone and an ad shows up and it says, buy this thing and it will make your life better. If you buy this phone or these headphones or this car or watch, that will make your life better. Right now we're in a political season and every politician is saying, hey, vote for me because if you do, I will enact these policies, I'll, do the, I'll, I'll put in these laws, and guess what? Your life is going to be better. We all want the good life. We all want the best life ever. It's a new school year. Maybe you just had your first day of school recently and you're excited. Maybe you're excited to, to join that team. Maybe you're excited to be the star on a team or do some sort of extracurricular activity or be surrounded, be surrounded by all your best friends. Maybe for you, that's what the good life is all about. Our theme for this school year here at Sailorville Students is just that. It's the good life. Our theme verse is Psalm 16 verse 11, it says, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. We're going to be diving into this idea that that God has an idea of what the good life truly is. Here at Sailorville Students, we truly believe that having a deep, meaningful relationship with Jesus is the best life you could ever have have. Now, you might be saying, wait, wait, wait a minute, Jared. I, like, I've read the Bible before, and some of the things in there don't seem like the best life ever. Fullness of joy, pleasures forevermore. Doesn't Jesus call us to, to take up our cross and follow him? Doesn't the Bible have all these rules and regulations that are placed on my life that, that seem to make my life not that good? Doesn't God call us to suffer through trials? Well, the answer to all those questions is yes. God does call us to a life of sacrifice if we follow him. And that's often all we talk about. We often talk about the cost of discipleship, but we, we seldomly talk about the cost of non-discipleship. As I was preparing for this message, someone sent me a quote from a book. Here's what one author had to say about this. We must count the cost not only of following Jesus, but also 
of not following Jesus. There is a cost of discipleship, but there is also a cost of non-discipleship. That is, it will cost you not to apprentice under Jesus. Surely, Jesus intended us to weigh both options. Have no doubt, he would encourage you to run a cost-benefit analysis on both possible futures. One where you follow the way, that's God's way. And the other where you follow your own path. When you do the math, you may conclude that yes, following Jesus will cost you a lot. But here's the thing. Not following Jesus will cost you even more. It will cost you life with God, the very purpose for which you were created. It will cost you access to the inner life of the Trinity, the peace which transcends all understanding, and the joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory. It will cost you freedom from the bondage of sin, healing from the wounding of sin, forgiveness from the guilt and shame of sin, and adoption into the family of God out of the isolation of sin. You see, people often complain about how hard the spiritual life is, and the honest truth is, yes, it is. But what's missing from this diagnosis is that the unspiritual life is even harder. Yes, the good life according to God and according to the Bible can be a difficult one. I'm not going to lie to you, but we still believe that it's the best life ever. And the good life begins with a relationship with Jesus Christ. If you're in here tonight and you have never trusted in Jesus Christ as your own personal Lord and Savior, that is where the good life with God begins. It begins by knowing Jesus Christ, the one who came to this earth, lived a perfect life, the best life, not not an easy life, not, not, not maybe the best life as you would determine it, He was homeless for much of his life, in fact, but it was the perfect life. And then he died on the cross for your sins. And then three days later, he rose victorious over sin and death so that you can have the good life, so that you can live not perfectly, but you can live in relationship with God because of what Christ did on your behalf. God's word tells us that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty good to me. That sounds like the good life, being cleansed from all of my sins. If you have further questions about coming to know Christ or this good life that we're talking about, All of these youth leaders that you got to meet tonight, they know and they love Jesus and they love you. They don't just have nothing else to do on a Wednesday night. They're here to see you experience this good life that we're talking about. I'm excited about this school year here at Sailorville Students. I'm excited about this group of youth leaders. I'm excited about you, the students here at Sailorville. I don't believe in luck. I believe that you are here on purpose, and for a purpose. And the main purpose of every single human being is to glorify God. And that begins with a relationship with God. So we would encourage you to take that step of obedience even tonight. I'm excited to see some of you students come to know Jesus as your personal Savior, maybe even tonight. If that's you, again, come and talk to us. I'm excited to see some of you to step up to the plate and lead in ways that you've never led before. Be a godly man, a godly young woman that God has called you to be. I'm excited to see some of you follow Jesus in believers' baptism. Even this upcoming Sunday night, we have a few students doing that. I'm excited for some of you to take your relationship with God to the next level, whatever that means. I'm sure that many of you, like me, are excited about this school year, but if you're honest, I'm sure there's some of you in here tonight that while you're excited about this new school year, you're also a little nervous or anxious. Maybe a new school year means heading back to a classroom where you don't really thrive. Maybe you have some really difficult life circumstances and going back to school just makes it worse. 
Maybe you just move schools or move to a new state. I just met a student earlier tonight that just recently moved to this, this to Iowa. And there's a lot of intimidating things happening in your life. I want to challenge you with this. That no matter what you're feeling right now during this season of life, I want to challenge you to go into this school year ready and with open hands, ready to listen to what God has to tell you about the good life. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for this opportunity to come and gather here once more. I thank you for this opportunity to open your word. I pray that for every student in here, if they know you, that they would grow in their relationship with you. And if they don't know you, God, that tonight would be the night of their salvation. In Jesus' name, amen.